So I talk a lot about Rocky Talkies on this channel and I thought we'd actually test it today. They have a really cool box that you can use. They have a cable and the charger with it. Today, we are gonna test the Rocky Talkie. Rocky! Oh, that's not good. At least it's not in the puddle. I'm gonna go get all that now. So I just repelled all that. There is no more guts to this thing. The box is pushing your limits. There looks like an essential component of the Rocky Taki. <laughs> you know, this is in pretty good shape considering, I think it hit the attendant and snapped it off. Testing, testing, testing. So it did work, but only if you were within six metric inches away. Who knew the antenna was so important? But it's not science, however, unless you do two. Okay, I'm getting ready to throw, but I'll also yell rock. All right, I'm ready. All right, let's try that again. Rock! <laughs> Looks like it's in pretty good shape. Can you hear me? So it still works. It's this one. It just had 4%. Now I didn't just pick up my trash, but an entire bag's worth while I was down there. And because of this test, seeing so much trash down there, I went more prepared a month later at GGBY Festival while being the juggling pin pickup guy and picked up enough trash to fill two giant hull bags. Ryan, they're tossing another pin out to him. Yeah, I, I'm pretty safe down here. I'm picking up trash and then grabbing this stuff. Anyways, so we drove away from that canyon, and while I was on the main road, I ran over this second rocky we dropped. And of course it's not science until... You have slow motion, correct. So I ran over it again. That went better than I hoped. Uh, Cause now I still get a rocky talkie. <laughs> now let's talk about the battery. Reliable communication is sometimes like so essential that your project can't happen without having these work. And if you don't know what I discovered after spending over two weeks testing these batteries, you could have an Epic and not be able to talk to your partner. I tested two of them in the house at room temperature and I checked them a few times a day and put this graph together where you can see it lasted over a week. But half the time I use these, they're out in the cold and I wanted to know if that drastically affected them. So I tested them again outside where it was an average temperature of right around freezing and I was able to put together this graph. It seemed to hover at certain percentages and it took quite a while for it to even start to go down. But you'll notice in both graphs, as soon as it hits 25%, it drops like a rock. Gee, get it? Now that's not a problem if you know that. But if it took a week for it to go down to 25%, literally a week, you might think you have a lot more life in this than you do. And it could be within an hour, it's down to 0% and it doesn't even transmit once it gets below 15%. I had plenty of battery on this Rocky before we started filming the drop tests, and by the time I checked it down there, it was at 4%. Now I know that I tested these in standby mode, and it doesn't matter if it's in high or low power mode, if it's in standby mode, it's all the same. So I wanted to see how long it would last if I continuously use them, and so I literally taped a rock to the transmit button, and it turned off after 60 seconds which is probably good. Otherwise you're just clogging up that station the entire time. I wasn't about to sit there and push the button every 60 seconds for four days because that's how long these typically last me when I'm using them. Their websites say it'll last anywhere between three and five days if you're actually using it and it's not just in standby mode. Now you can pull off this rubber case and replace the 1550 milliamp hour rechargeable battery with a spare if you think you'll be out long enough, but I haven't needed it more than four days, and if I think I do, I'll just turn it off at night. Otherwise, if I'm just doing a two or three day project, I don't even turn it off. Now, if you're just climbing and never more than 60 meters apart from each other at any one time, you can just keep it in low power mode because that's plenty to communicate and it'll conserve the battery even longer. Now they say the recharge time on this is five hours, but I usually only have to do it for an hour or two. I was gonna film the time it took, how long it took to get back up to 100% from zero. And by the time I went back like an hour later, it was at 100%, so they're pretty quick. 39% battery in the uh, 15 minutes it took me to drive to the main road. Anyways, now let's break it. What I wanna know is how strong is this loop that the carabiner connects to. So I put a sling around the whole Rocky in case it got hung up on something, and then we'll see if it rips apart. Aw, no, it's sliding off. 
What was our force? Uh, you didn't even get up to one kilonewton. 0.74. I mean, that's almost 200 pounds of force. I mean, that's something. It's it's a rocky talkie we're testing, not a bolt. <laughs> not even one kilonewton before your sling slips on these things. Try number two. Whoa! No way! No! No way! It broke the carabiner! <laughs> you can't tell me rubber held that. It didn't. Did you see the flaw in that test? We basically tested the carabiner and the Rocky just went for the ride sandwiched in between. Let's actually pull on the Rocky this time and I have three millimeter soft shackles and we're gonna pull it apart to actually see what actually happened. Yeah, that definitely seems more believable. The rubber's around this plastic case and then the rubber just broke apart there. So this carabiner clips to either chest harness or your harness, and if you want to use it, you bring it up to your mouth and you still have this leash in case you drop it. And we're going to test how strong this leash is just because it is something else that I can test. But this is what it looks like when it's in proper use. I almost hit myself in the face. I've stretched it out as much as I'm going to. Let's see if these carabiners break first. That took 0.2 kilonewtons. I ran out of throw. It, like I pulled it two feet and it still just keeps stretching. I thought it was like gonna be a stiff cable in there. Well, it stretched out the ends permanently, but this still has coil. And the plastic seems really wonky. This plastic carabiner was stronger than the, the crimp that held the wire. That's a cluster. 50 pounds pretty good for- respectable. <laughs> for a plastic carabiner. Super strong enough even if you're rough with it. Now let's talk about range. Now, if you don't know the details about range, they could hose you. Even though the projects I've done, I've never had an issue with it. Now, the larger projects that I've done that I literally could not have done without a reliable radio has been the 900 meter long zip line that we rigged in Moab to base jump off of. We can do a shuttle load and then I can help you guys off. That sounds great, Andy. Let's do that. Why don't you shuttle up here? Okay. I'd love for you to check this gear before I go off. Cool. Perfect and we did a 700 foot rope jump between Leaning Tower and Fifi Buttress in Yosemite. Ho, ho, ho. Uh, Bobby, that looked really close to that tree. In our side of the two kilometer world record Highline in Sweden had Rockies between us and our team, which saved our ass when we had to send Greg down towards the middle to connect the Highline. Otherwise there'd be no way to communicate with him. And we were lowering him with a winch. And on that project, it was the easiest walkie talkie for the person walking for up to three hours to carry with them in case they had uh, an emergency or needed to communicate with us for any reason. Did you see how many twists he did? Did you see how late he opened it? <laughs> and of course, it's great for climbing. On my last big wall was the first time I actually got to use it on a big wall and it made it just so much easier than doing rope tugs. So Andrea grabbed a Rocky and drove away while I got on the drop tower in Flatland, Central California. Now radio waves aren't complicated, but I think we use our cell phones too often and forget the basics. The license-free FRS frequencies can in theory go up to 25 miles in our atmosphere, and the owners did actually get that when they were within line of sight, being on one side of Lake Tahoe and the other. Yeah, dude, 25 miles sounding great. And being that where I was was so flat and I was on top of my drop tower, I figured Andrea could drive about maybe three to five miles because nothing's perfect. Guess what I got? Less than a mile. Two reasons for that. If the radio wave goes over one of our heads, well, it has nothing to bounce back off of to come back to us because they'll bounce. They work great in the mountains for that reason. And the other reason was obstacles. We did have trees on our way. We had a slight hill in our way at one point and she was in a metal box with wheels. I actually talked to one of the owners about it after I did the test, and he said that people who test this in flat areas are kind of underwhelmed, because that's not where it shines. Now I could hear Isla from the bottom of the canyon, even though she wasn't in line of sight because it was bouncing off the walls all the way up. It's ready to haul. All right, I'll start hauling. And we could hear Greg, even though he wasn't in line of sight because we had the other mountain for it to bounce off of. So when we did the test again up here in the Cascades, Andrea drove down the hill and we were able to get three miles out of that test and she was in her car still and it worked a lot lot better. Now I don't need it to go further than that. Most things I'm doing is a kilometer or less. Let's talk about the 128 channels because that's not really how it works and if you're not an expert at this this is really going to help you. I was on El Capitan and I of course used channel 128 that it comes default with and 
somebody got on the station and we're like, oh, okay, whatever. And we changed it to channel one. And then we could hear other people and then we change it to channel two and I'm in mid pitch climbing and there's people and we have to be like, change to channel three. And we just kept going up. We had nothing but interruptions happening all the time. And that sucked. And if I knew what I'm about to tell you, I wouldn't have had that problem. Check out this magic trick. If I talk in 23, you can hear a number one. And if I talk in channel one, you cannot hear in channel 23 me come through. Let me explain why. But if I talk in channel one, you can see the busy sign, but you cannot hear me. So what's going on? The FCC says that the FRS radios, or family radio stations, the license-free radios that these are, get to play in the 462 to 467 megahertz frequency. And with increments of 125 kilohertz, inside of that range, you can only really have 22 real channels that you're working with. Now, seven of these channels share frequencies with the GMRS radios that do require licenses, so it's nice that they're cross-compatible. But you can see buried in the instruction manual that the channels repeat themselves every 22nd channel. So the 23rd channel is the same frequency as channel 1. So channels 23 through 128 are the same 22 channels, but with pre-programmed privacy codes. Now, I can change the privacy code by holding down the down volume. And when I come here, I can change it to a different privacy code and I have 121 to choose from. Now there are two types of privacy codes. One through 38 is CT, CSS, which are analog, which it puts out a squelch that you can't hear. And if this radio is on the same privacy code, it knows when it hears that squelch to tell you what it's picking up. Otherwise, it just reads busy and doesn't tell you anything. Privacy codes 39 through 121 are DCS or digital codes, which basically spits out some zeros and ones before sending the message. And if this is set to basically the same privacy code, it will know that those zeros and ones mean to tell you the message. Otherwise, it just reads busy. So the first half of the privacy codes go, hey, Charlie. And the other half of the privacy codes go, 0011001, hey, Charlie. So if you start on channel one and the privacy codes are off, you are going to pick up every signal, regardless of their privacy codes, that share that frequency. And if you're on channel 23 with a privacy code, if channel one starts talking, it's not gonna have that squelch or digital code and it's gonna show busy, but it's not gonna tell you the transmission. So you really need to know it's not a privacy code, it is a leave me alone code. Everyone can hear you that's on that frequency, but you don't have to hear everyone when you're on El Capitan and wanna just be left alone. But when I was on El Cap going from channel one, two, three, four, and I was having problems all the way up, I gave up by the time I got to channel 23, which is when I would have started having less problems. So there are 22 channels that you can use, and there are 121 privacy codes that you can use, giving you a total of 2,662 usable separate stations that you can interact with your partner. Now I have bad news for you. If you are on channel 69, with privacy code 69, it's just channel three. Now, even though you can change channel three to have a privacy code, I would leave channel one through 22 alone and just start messing with the channels 23 and beyond in case you want to do the scan mode. And you hold that down for a moment. And then when it starts scanning, it will go through. Um, does it have to call you? Marky Mark. <laughs> and then you can pick up somebody else's conversation. <laughs> It really helped just to use one of the main channels, scan for it when we were using another walkie-talkie when we were out skiing, and we were able to make them very compatible, very easy, and there weren't enough people around for it to matter. Now your Rockies come pre-programmed with different privacy codes all the way up the chain, and they're also pre-programmed with high power mode and low power mode depending on the channel. So you don't have to do anything except just change channels until you don't have any interruptions and you have higher low power mode without really having to push any of the other buttons. Not that it's that hard. Now, when I get my Rockies, I go from channel 23 to 128. I change the privacy codes by just a little in either direction, and I make sure they're all the same. So I can use all these channels with them ver being very unlikely being used by somebody else. So if you hear someone and you try to respond and they don't respond back, then you know that you're on one of the main channels with no privacy codes, or you have less than 15% battery because you can only hear people after that. Now, Rocky's privacy codes match most other radios' privacy codes, but if they don't, they have a chart on the owner's manual that you can go and 
match them up and be private and still be compatible with other radios. Now, if you just hold the plus power button, you can go from high power mode to low power mode. And I do that whenever I don't need it to conserve battery. But it's because of this high power mode is why they can't sell this in Europe. Europe doesn't allow FRS radios to transmit at two watts, only 0.5 watts, which is the low power mode. Now, I think they should make a low power mode because there's so much else going on for this radio that I like. And most of the time, I only need the low power mode. I think it'd be great if they made a Europe friendly version. If you email them and bug them long enough, maybe they'll do that. Now, this is really important. Don't forget to lock it once you've got your channel where you want it or it'll change and you won't think your partner is telling you anything and your partner might be really needing you at the bottom of a rope swing, hypothetically speaking. You can get rid of that uh, beep sound if you're wanting more of a quiet environment. Once it's off, you push like a screenshot, this button and this button, and you hold that down. When it turns on, it won't have the beep and you can hear that it's not on. In order to put that back, I would hold both of these again like that. And when it comes on, it has the beep again. To conserve battery life, they are not dual band radios, so they cannot pick up NOAA weather stations. Something good to know. They are IP56 waterproof rated, so you can splash them pretty liberally, but you can't really dunk them in the water. Now, if I'm wearing a backpack or something, this is clips on really easily. Um, I like the carabiner. However, when I'm climbing, it's all the way down to my hip, and unless I'm wearing a chest harness, I have to take it off and be like, hold on, what was that? Kind of annoying. So I actually might get the mic if I'm climbing and I wanna run that cable up through my shirt and just have it right here. Now they charge with a USB-C cable and when you do turn them off, you don't wanna just do that and think that they turn off because the screen will turn off by itself. You wanna really hold it down until you hear the beep, but you also wanna check with the talk button to make sure that it's not coming back on because I have accidentally left these on in the bag, still has a long battery life, but when I meant to turn them off, I really did want them off. These are very durable, reliable, and the battery lasts a long time, and I personally use them. Let me know if you like these really in-depth gear reviews. They take me quite a while to make. If you go to rockytalkie.com slash how not to, you get 10% off credited to you when you go there, and it votes with your dollars if you like me getting into the weeds on different gear. Now, one of the next videos I'm editing is doing an in-depth test of the G7 Portal Edge so you can subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss that. And right now you can go check out where I talked to the engineers who developed the C4 Ultralights and got to actually brake test one of them at Black Diamond. Anyways, thanks for watching. Cheers. <laughs>